you and I have been doing this for a bit, and like when you square up against someone who is bringing it, there's no better feeling. Yeah. You're just like, okay, because you're in the trenches with that person. Like, to to be with someone who's like <clears throat> shopping on Amazon while they're about to be in a scene, you're like, it's like, oh no. I'm not gonna say I have done that before. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it's like I do have three kids. Like. Yes. No. You you actually know how to multitask better than anybody I've ever met, and you still bring it. each other a while now yes and because you did everybody wants some with my brother Wyatt yep and you guys went to Austin and like had what sounded like a total party yep so that's kind of how we met and then you went and did Top Gun Bradshaw as I live and breathe hangman you look good oh well, I am good rooster we talked about when you got that movie because I am such a, t I mean, that movie for me is like, the first one was everything. It like defined so much of how I see boys. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, that like, all makes sense. That old yeah. volleyball yeah, yeah, scene, yeah. I was like, oh my God. Um, but we talked about how exciting that was and how, what an awesome experience it was that you had. But then we also, it was like, when is it coming out? Like, yeah. When is it coming out? Yeah. When is, um, so we ha it was like you did the movie and then there was some technical issues and then there was COVID and then Top Gun came out and like blew everybody's socks off. It was the first big theater movie and I haven't talked to you about what that felt like for you. Yeah, it's been a, um, I have to say th start to finish, like I've journaled about all this stuff because it's kind of hard to describe like first auditioning for this thing and knowing like, you know, I was I was prepping for that audition even for months before. I was like living on naval bases. I have buddies that are fighter pilots and I was like so focused on getting it. Then I didn't get the role and then Miles Teller got the mm -hmm. Rooster role. And then this whole situation where Tom Cruise is like pitching me a new role with Jerry Bruckheimer. So that was all kind of surreal. And then it took a year plus to actually shoot the movie. And Tom's like a perfectionist. And so he was just like, hey, we gotta, we gotta get it right, we gotta get it right. So we're doing reshoots and all these different things. And then when COVID happened, like I had seen the movie and then COVID happened. And I was like, oh man, we're just sitting on this awesome thing. So you kind of feel like you're waiting for. And then it was like, what? I mean, did you have a moment there where you're like all of this sort of expectation and it might never happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the other thing is like you work, you know how this is, is yeah. like you work, we've known each other for so long and I've just like kind of been slowly trying to, to do the thing and then all of a sudden you get this amazing opportunity, this amazing movie and then everybody's like, movie it's business is bad. done. Like, <laughs> it's no. over. <laughs> yeah, totally. No one's ever going to a theater ever again. Yeah. But that's not what happened. In, in true Tom Cruise form, um, I would say, you know, the perfectionist that he is, he always wins, man. And he sure did with this. I mean, I know that for me, that experience in the theater I went, I was in New York. I went to the on 14th Street at Union Square uh, to see it on the big screen with an audience. And it was like, thank God, you know, these are the movies we need in the movie theater. Um, I feel the same about Glass Onion, actually, the Knives Out movie that I'm in. Yes. I was like, oh, this is so fun. Hug, right? I no. mean, can we? I, I, hug I feel like we both this year are in movies that we need in the theater to to like build the theater experience back up again. You know, I'm definitely gonna see Glass Onion again in the theater because I want to experience that with other people. Yeah, that was like I watched it last night and I was like, oh, this. You know, like when you watch a movie and you're like, every actor looks like they're having such a good time that like, yeah, you know, other actors are watching it being like. That's what I want to do. I, I was like, that looks like. That was you guys in Top Gun. I was yeah. like, this looks like so much fun. Yeah. When you're when you're making a movie like that, do, do you feel a little bit, like when you saw that for the first time, like, I hope I'm living up to the Top Gun hype. Like, did you have anxiety going into seeing that for the first time? I mean, I'm probably like you. I think we've had some talks about this where you see a movie for the first time and you're just like, I 
hate you. I hate you. You're <laughs> I the least it. talented person ever. Yeah, you're like you're sweating in a migraine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember this on <laughs> Hidden Figures is like I saw like an early cut of Hidden Figures and everybody in that movie just kills it. But then I'm also, I play John Glenn in the movie. So my section, there's like, um, I'm in like a space shuttle, you know, I'm like a little capsule and things like that. And they have like a guy that's like puppeteering things floating on wires. But that was all in the cut that I saw. So I oh. could literally see a man like puppeteering floating things. And it was like green screen. There's like a grip, you know, with a holding a, <laughs> to be the sun. And I just remember being like, I ruined this beautiful movie, the legacy of these amazing women. I was like, you ruined it. Oh, that's the best. So, but you didn't. You didn't. Yeah, but, it, but like Top Gun felt like that. That was actually one of the first movies because they showed us the final cut. They, when I watched that movie and I was like, I think, I think we did it, you know, I, yeah. I think we did it. So that was a great experience. And Tom called it out. He like Babe Ruth did. He was like, this movie's good enough where we have to just wait for this pandemic to be over. But you yeah. know how it is. It's like you guys also incorporated masks into your movie, which we was did. such an interesting, your mask in this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always say that the masks in this movie are like a for like immediate, immediate kind of, Easter egg as to who all these people yes. are, or the lack of mask. Yes, you know yes. it's like each person and the where the way they wear their mask is really who who these people who they are. Yeah, and Ryan's so specific as a writer, Ryan Johnson, writer director, like he, you know, all of it was written. He even wrote what we looked like, you know. So like it was very specific. The way he writes was sort of amazing, and then to actually just see it come to life and realize that. There was nothing left to discover, really, except getting inside of the character. Like, he just knows exactly what he wants. Wait, so the mask thing was written in a script? Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, genius. He's, that's so smart. Oh, he's such a great writer. Like, honestly, that reading that script for me was like a reminder of great comedic writers and how hard it is. You know, to me, great comedy is on the page. You know, it's like, the, the, and, 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 and it's always grounded in, char in, in character. Yeah. And always has a grounded quality to it. And then, you know, as a director, he casts the people that will bring that comedy to life. But the, but the, but the movie read the way it played. Like, you know, not an easy thing to do. Well, and also your character, Birdie, is iconic. It's such a <laughs> oh, fun character. So it's nice. a Halloween costume. I mean, I mean I, it's like. It's, I kind of was like, oh, wow, I can't. Like, next year, I hope that I get to see a, a bunch of, like, Knives Out characters. You're going to see it with the mask, with, uh, the, so, with, the, with the net mask. Yeah. It's going to be. But um, you, where, where did you base that character off of? Because knowing you as long as I've known you, you're surrounded by some of the most interesting people ever. Like every time I've come to your house or, or your family ranch or any of that stuff, it's like there's always just interesting, eccentric people walking around. So I was like, I feel like this character's got to be based on something. Somebody. You know, I mean, maybe there's like some color in there that I stole here and there from people that I know. But it was, like I said, I mean, he really wrote those characters. For me, it was more like what he wrote, I could see her body, I could see her body language. Like that was to me the first thing that popped off the page that was like, I need to literally tear Ryan Johnson's door down to play this part because I can, I, I know how she walks, like I can see it. And I could see how she moved. I just like needed to be in Birdie, you know? and. And the lines were actually like these, you know, the jokes were the hardest part because the pressure was so on because they were such, a, they were big laughs in the script. So anytime those moments came, like, it was like one of those things, you know, everyone would be like, oh, I can't wait. I know, I hate I that. can't wait I when that. you get to do this. And you're like, stop saying that, the pressure. <laughs> so when the day would come, it's like the whole cast, I mean, we're all together. It's not even like, you know, a scene between me and somebody else, but it's like the whole cast like staring like, I wonder how she's gonna 100%. deliver the line we love so much. <laughs> I, I love I love a crew that feels invested in the movie. That's yeah. always fun to be a part of. But one of my least favorite things is when a crew's like, big day. Yeah. Big day. This is it. <laughs> Whole movie. The pressure today, is right? so on. Yeah. Especially for some of those those moments in the script that you're right, have gotten laughs in yeah. table reads and rehearsals. Oh, yeah, and, and you're like, shit, and then, like I hope I deliver this thing yeah, right. Just fold yeah. like a launch area. 
The challenge with Birdie was really grounding her because she's so big, you know? She's so flamboyant. And I think, like, in a situation like that, a character can become very airy, you know, and have yep. no, like, s substance. That's, and I think if you ground characters like that, if you figure out how to do that, they become a little, you become a little more empathetic with them, and therefore you kind of root for them, like a strange yep. rooting thing that happens. And for me, that was Birdie, like, why is she like this? Like how, and like, to me, it, it was a mix of, she's so deeply, deeply in search of validation and love and desire to be seen. Yes. Right, and she's just really not that smart. And <laughs> so her ways of trying to be seen or validated just always just like, they're like, you know, ricochet back at her. One of my favorite things that you do over and over in this thing is you will say something with confidence and immediately in your head, I'll see the thought of like, <laughs> is that right? Is that a word? Like it's such a, right. it's such a good comedic reversal because I realize like throwing something out there, the line on itself works, but your internal thought that's right, was yeah. literally like so strong. <laughs> that gear shift is so strong that I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's like, and I always also, the, the you know, to me, Birdie heard every third word. Like, yeah. so that was something that when we were doing it, it was like, you know, they always say like acting is listening. Yeah. You know, well, not for Birdie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, Janelle said the other day, she's like, I had all my books and I had this book and that book and I had my references. And so women asked me and what I wanted to say, which I didn't, but was like, you know, I had my books too, but I just had to like forget them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, and that, that's who Birdie yeah. is. Yeah. The other thing that I love that you did and I'm, I just thought it was like, okay, that's such a great character choice. When, when every great reveal happens in this movie, the way you react to it, you're almost like the last, the last uh, circle on the wheel where it goes, everybody's like, <gasps> and you're like, ah! Like, <laughs> you're always like kind of performative in terms of like the yes. way you emote, which is such a, I know this sounds silly, it's like we've, we've both been in this business a long time, but there are a group of people that we both know where, they can't help but be the center of attention oh. even in a moment like that. Oh yeah, like, you right, know, that's right. <laughs> they have to show that they're <laughs> that's themselves. That's right. You're like, no, nah, not the right, yeah, not the not right time. The right time. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say for you, and I wanna talk about devotion too, but with Top Gun, you weren't a very likable character, which to me, knowing you, I mean, you were, you ended up yeah, being, yeah, right? yeah. you know, but like, for me, what was so, what I, I mean, I, I was so excited for you because I know you so well. And like, you know, in our community, you are the guy that everyone roots for because everyone loves you so much. It's just like, oh, Glenn's the best, Glenn's the best. So it was really fun for me to see you play something so well that was like, oh. It's no time to be thinking about the past. What's that supposed to mean, Rooster? I can't be the only one that knows that Maverick flew with his old Lieutenant, man. That's enough. Or that Maverick was flying when his old man. Lieutenant, that's enough. On set, like, was that one of those things that was like a total juxtaposition? Like the camera would go off and then you were, you know. Oh, I'm not like, uh, yeah, I'm not like method. I'm not like just <laughs> <laughs> spitting on people the whole movie. <laughs> um, I will say that was something that, you know, as you and I know over the course of this thing, sometimes you can fall into the trap of wanting to be liked on camera. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, oh, like, you know, this person's, people love this character and this person's not likable and blah, blah, blah. And so in a movie like this where you know there's gonna be a lot of eyes on it, you don't wanna be just Draco Malfoy, for lack of a better word. Like, I love Draco Malfoy, <laughs> big Harry Potter fan. But, but there, there's, there's, a, there's a opportunity that you see and you don't want to fall into a trope. Right. But Tom gave me this advice and he was like, for the ending to work, you have to completely lean in yeah. to that. Everybody else in the movie is questioning their own ability, questioning right. if they're ready for this mission. You're the only guy in this whole thing that's not questioning it. Right. And right. that also makes you a necessary Top Gun element. So if there's any sort of likability or any sort of apology in anything you say, the movie doesn't work. Right. So he's like, you gotta just lean into the douchebaggery of it all. Which, <laughs> just go. <laughs> you know, and I, just, I just keep getting cast as a douchebag. Oh, you know, do, do you now? Are you still, do you, do you get the douchebag role now? Well, I mean, even the thing I did with Ollie Scream Queens, 
you know, where I'm just like <laughs> the right. super douche. Oh wait, was that the first? Wait, did you do that before you did everyone? I think I think everybody I did everybody wants want some and first then with Wyatt, and then right. Ollie on Scream Queens. I feel like everybody's getting to know now that we've spent many times drinking together. Yes, with this family. Is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> been, been hammered with the, <laughs> with, with the, the Hudson Russells, Russells and the Hudsons. Yeah, but then you went and did like I guess set it up. So yes, yeah. set it up with Zoe Deutsch. Yeah, you weren't douchebaggy. No, no, I mean that. not totally. I always bring a little douche to every, every <laughs> role. I, I think. Yeah. So okay, let's get Tom over with because you yeah. love talking about Tom. So my son recently wanted to skydive, yes. and I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, Ryder, thank you so much for giving me a heart attack. Yeah. Right, like <laughs> yeah. You're, he's 18, he's like, see ya mom, go on skydiving. And I remember you talking to me one time about Tom and the skydiving and the, and the piloting and, and I was like, I need to call Tom. Yes. And Tom ended up like, I mean, he was so all about it. Wait, for, for Ryder? For Ryder. You called Tom I to, called about Tom Ryder skydiving? I called Tom because I was like, please, like, who do I call? I, want, I don't want him to go to some weird place. Like, what? And he was so excited. But then he got me on the phone. And by the end of this phone call, like, I wanted to solo, for, like, dive. You yeah. know, like, skydive, yeah. right? Somehow he had convinced me how incredible skydiving was. One person that would never jump yes. out of an airplane. Did you go? I, did, I have not yet, but I would. We should go. But the point is, is that you work with Tom, you are now flying. Yeah. You are now a pilot. Yeah. Now, did he give you that talk about flying and the importance of it, or how great it was, or was that something you always wanted to do, was learn how to fly a plane? I mean, I grew up with the Blue Angels on my wall, which is like kind of the premier okay. flying squadron. I've always loved planes. Yeah. But when we shot Top Gun, when you see Tom's love of flying, it's the most infectious thing. Yeah. He'll show up, he's like, ah, I got this new plane, you wanna come and, you wanna come fly in it, you wanna go do this? And, and he'll fly on to set in his P-51, which is this like old World War II plane, and he just makes it look so fun and cool, and the thing that I've realized with flying is it's, it's that sense of adventure, that spontaneity that is, is Tom. Mm -hmm. It defines Tom where he can just go, you know what, that sounds really cool. Do you want to go skydiving? We can do it tomorrow. Hey, like, you know, and he'll talk to people back and go, whoa, 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 and it starts <laughs> No, no, it starts and actually you're like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> so, totally. Uh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was the thing that you realize is it's that reality distortion field where he can convince you that anything is possible right. when you're around him, and his love of anything becomes yeah. your love because it's just that enthusiasm, and that's what I felt like making that movie is I think the thing that was so inspiring working with Cruz was he goes to set like it's his first day every yeah. day. He's so stoked to be there. He's talking about lenses, and he like he would like text me at night about uh, a scene that I was shooting the next day. He'd be like, "Hey, I watched this movie last night, like this Lee Marvin movie. Like, I think there's some cool stuff I want to talk to you tomorrow yes. about your like the way you're posing in the doorway or whatever, the way you throw me out. Like, I think we can build some of that in there. And I've never met an actor that is concerned about my performance." as yeah. much, you know what I mean? Like, it's always a team sport, right? You want everybody to win, but someone who's calling you about your performance and how it can be better, yeah. I've never been a part of that. He just, he also is just, look, he's not gonna, it's not gonna come out if it's not great. And Top Gun, like, if that wasn't great, then no, that would have been a, that would have been terrible. No, <laughs> it would have totally. been, been such a bummer. We needed a good Top Gun so bad, you know? <sighs> But but you guys succeeded. Let's. I want to move on to devotion. You still with me? Ready, set, hit it! I know this is one of those things that happen all the time. Like you know, you 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 do a movie and then you do another movie that's another plane movie and then all anybody wants to talk about is like, you know, why, like, like now, like, are you only gonna do plane movies? You know, and you're like, no, that's yeah, not what's yeah. gonna happen, right? Um, but since this is actors on actors, yeah. I wanna ask you about how annoying that question is for you. Because <laughs> do you find that because you had Top Gun and then now Devotion and that you're a pilot in both and then you played an astronaut and this, that for some reason people are just gonna always ask you about piloting and like if that's the only thing you're ever gonna do? Um, I will say I just took a, a visit to the Pentagon yesterday and it's by far the most famous place I've ever felt in my whole life. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, okay, so this is a good thing. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I'll say, um, you know, devotion, you know, I developed, I found that book and developed that for five years. Um, I, I found the book in 2016. So found that and, and have been developing uh, ever since then. So when Top Gun came about in 2018, um, that there was a choice. And when I missed out on that, the rooster roll, that was the conversation I had with Tom was, hey, like, you know, I, did, I didn't get this role and, and, you know, I actually have a naval aviation movie I've been developing. There's a script. We're looking at directors now. Like, maybe that's just what I'm going to do. And he convinced me that there were, there's room for two. And I'm really, yeah. really happy because everything I learned on Top Gun got to be infused into devotion. Right. But it's just funny because this year, like, I have two big navally. <laughs> <laughs> so it does feel like, hey, you going to do anything else, this is gonna be the This is going to be the question. Jonathan Majors is major. Yeah. First of all, your performance was wonderful. Um, he, he, he really was really special in this film, had so much heavy lifting to do. Um, and I loved your guys' chemistry. In your experience now, you, you know, what, what is that like building that kind of chemistry or that trust between you and I? Because you guys had some really hard scenes in that, yeah. you know? And he, you know, you, you had to go there and, and he really had to go there at times. Um, what was that like? I mean, would that, did that come easy for you guys? I remember we, in our first conversation, because he is, he's just a powerhouse. I mean, this guy, I really, I really think Majors is going to be around I can't forever. wait to I'm see what so... he does in his career. I mean, he really was special. I just, like, loved watching him. It's, it's so fun. As you know, like you've, you, you and I have been doing this for a bit, and like when you square up against someone who is bringing it, there's no better feeling. Yeah. You're just like, okay, because you're in the trenches with that person. Like to, to be with someone who's like <clears throat> shopping on Amazon while they're about to be in a scene, you're like, <laughs> it's like oh, no. I'm not going to say I have done that before. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but it's like the, I do have three kids. Yes, like. no. You, you actually know how to multitask better than anybody I've ever met, and you still bring it. But, like, he's just a guy that's just absolute focus. And I remember our first conversation that we had leading up to Devotion because I knew he was method. Like, I knew he was going to be in it, that Jonathan Majors was not going to be walking on that set. So I said, hey, no matter what happens, I was like, we just have to look, be able to look each other in the eyes and understand what's real and what's not real. I'm always down for method stuff as long as no one else is getting bullied. Like, I'm here. Like, as long as it's, it's, it's between you and me. Yeah. But sometimes, like, people can be brought into that, that vortex. Or, as we know, with, with certain actors, they can use it as an excuse to misbehave. Right. Right. And, and, and with Majors, he just, he's just such a pro and yeah. just brought it and just cracks himself open in this movie. Like, the conversations we had, he would, um, when, we, when we had to be on the same page on certain days, he would send me songs the night before so that we could be listening to the same song. It, we Aww. would send each other like poetry. We literally, every scene in this movie, we would uh, send each other poetry and ascribe a poem to a scene so that spiritually we're kind of on the same thing. Oh, but he's like that so guy great. that just, he's, a, he's, a, he's kind of made of something else. Like he really is. I uh, love it. You can feel actor. it. Yeah. You can feel it. I've worked with a method actor. I worked with Daniel Day Lewis on Nine. Oh my God, on um, yes. And that was really interesting because. I got, I feel like I got the best of Daniel Day-Lewis because he played Guido, which was yeah. this, he was, in, in my case, like, you know, trying to sleep with me or, or yeah. trying not to sleep with me. Yeah. Even though he wanted to sleep with me, yeah. you know? So, like, so the, so what is that so like the Daniel <laughs> I got was, like, writing me letters every day and, like, you know, very, like, loving and kind. And then I, I remember one time Leo DiCaprio, because they did Gangs of New York, was yeah. like, how is Daniel? I'm like, great. He's like, Really? Because on He's Gangs a of New York. He's psychopath in Gangs of New York. <laughs> right. And we laugh because it's sort of like, you know, when you're working with someone who's really a method, you don't know, like, who are you going to get every day, you know? One hundred, well, I mean, yeah, that, do you still have those letters from... I do, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I do. It was so cool. What is that like when you shoot the final scene on that and you call cut? What is Daniel Day-Lewis like five minutes after the final shot? Oh, I, I, you know, him, I mean, himself, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's not like, it, it was interesting because he's in character, but he's not in 
He's not in character. Like he'll talk to you about your kids and his kids, but he's still in character. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's not like in sixties. Like he can still have normal conversations, that's right. but he's not. That's but, right. Yeah. But he's like in. He's Guido, having those conversations. It's that's, really interesting. That's a really yeah. What it, what is that like for for you being on that side? Because because that's the that's what I'm saying. Like knowing the joke, like that we're both in on the joke. It's like yeah. Because when Majors is doing that, I'm aware Majors is Jesse Brown. Yeah. And so we, that dynamic and the way he's talking, the way he's approaching, you know, the way he's walking and standing, yeah. it's all that character. So it's kind of an out-of-body experience when you're kind of a part it of is, it. It is, and we're very similar because yeah. we're also very linear. I think, like, we, which is probably what, you know, I want to get into, like, you also are very committed to producing and wanting to be on that side of it because you want to tell all kinds of stories. You want to create, you know, yeah. develop them and create them. And you've always been like that. Yeah. And you're great at it, clearly. And I'm like that. So I have that linear brain. Like I sitting inside of the I like to I like to witness it as well. Like yeah. that's my process. And what I've learned through working with all kinds of different actors is that we just all have different processes. Yeah. And what I think I'm really good at is like not letting it, not personalizing someone else's process. Yeah. Because, you know, that's where like, you know, sometimes people need to bring a lot of ego in a room yeah. to get so to get there. Yeah. You know, whereas it's not like my favorite. <laughs> you yeah, know, to totally. it's not my favorite when they bring that. I kind of go like, you know what? Just give them the space. And and I think, I think, you know, really. What we do, and I, I say this like it's hard, hard. What I mean by hard is that accessing the the emotion or the vulnerability, the um, opening up the floodgate for a lot of people yeah. as an actor is makes you feel really vulnerable. Yeah, and people, every actor just handles that differently, and. And I think that the great producer actors or director actors know how to hold space for that. Yeah. Um, which is probably why you lean towards wanting to be also on the other side of the camera. Am I making sense? No, that, no 100%. And, and what was interesting about um, Knives Out for Glass Onion is we had all these like heavyweights on one, you know, we were like in a green room together like, you know, in slippers, like there was no trailer going back to the trailer. Like we were just like, and, and there was no ego on this. It was really like fantastic. Like everyone was just having a fucking blast. I'm obviously familiar with you all as well. Governor, Dr. Tucson, Miss Buddy J. What an extraordinary gathering. It looks like the greatest experience of all time. And also, I've I've heard every one of those actors has a great reputation. You all seem like it's it, it everybody's got good juju around them. I think that's what Ryan yeah. was like, I'm gonna cast this movie like I'm you know, like I'm putting a dinner party together. Yeah. Because we're gonna spend a lot of time together. And even when we'd get like tired and like not want to be there anymore, like it was a group of people who would like, you know, like start like doing funny things on the floor and like, you know, we would just get wacky. Yeah. There was no like, what are we doing here? You know, yeah, like, that... why are we waiting for three hours? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like there was none of that. It was like, should we like do something weird? Like, should we like meditate to like Joe Dispenza? You know, yeah. there was no um, stuff. Yeah. That's, that was cause fun. that's also infectious. When one person does that, when you see bad behavior kind of like, hit a set, it does become, it can just, it's an ecosystem. You yeah. know, when you introduce like a, a parasitic element to an ecosystem, it can, so that's like that no asshole policy. That yeah. you're just like, looking that's what Ryan right. put together, I was like, not only were you guys shooting in Greece, while well, Linklater and I just finished writing a movie together. And, and we were. And I love him. He's the best, he's the best. But we were sitting there and it's like, we're exploring like, 
the CD parts of strip clubs in Houston and things Ooh. like that, which is great. <laughs> um, we, but we, interesting. <laughs> interesting. It's not Greece, uh, <laughs> but that's what, that's what we were sitting there doing. We were yeah. like. All the seedy parts why, of these yeah. why back are we police. Yeah, I was why like, why are we, are we writing ourselves Greece? into this location? We're literally looking at your shots <laughs> on the internet, going viral. Everybody looks great. You're in these cabanas That's in Greece. Next. I'm That's like, next, yeah, Glenn. okay, we're gonna we'll do you that. You and I next will time. do a rom com, a very much well written, needed rom com yes. in Italy. I think that's the move. Um, <laughs> accepting open submissions now for our, our Italian rom com. That's right. Um, speaking of rom coms. Uh, I always wonder, like, w you know, when someone has the ability to be funny and poignant and um, has a certain je ne sais quoi about them, girls like me or Reese or Sandra yeah. <laughs> yeah. were like, would Glenn do rom-coms? And now that you're, like, in this space of kind of doing other things. Is that something that you would still do? Would you still pull a George Clooney and I, go do something that's more rom com -y? I just love the image of you, Sandra Bullock and Reese Witherspoon, sitting around talking about me. Um, <laughs> I just think that's... We're like, that, oh. Yeah. I wonder. What about Glenn? I'm just going to keep that little <laughs> that little dinner party out. Um, no, I, you know, I think rom-coms for me, I, I, I would say over the course of like shooting something like Devotion where... I met the real life people. There was immense pressure to get it right. As soon as I finished that movie, I was like, I need a palate cleanser. Right. I don't know. I don't know if you right. feel this way, but like yes. you shoot something really heavy that kind of unlocks a piece of you in a great way. The 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 terrifying element of am I good enough? Can't is this inside of me? Can I get this right? And then after that experience, you're like, okay, the, what you guys did on this movie, which is everybody brings performances and it's still dynamic and it's still fun and it's theatrical and all those things but it also looks like the greatest time it looks like the wish fulfillment of why you moved to Hollywood that's right why you, you know? want to make movies yeah to have that kind of fun but yeah I, I would love to no this Italian rom-com we there's like there's a there's a real <laughs> it's happening there's, there's, it's gonna happen we're gonna make this happen but that's a, a a thing that I've noticed that you have done since I've known you is you make all of this look really fun where I feel like a lot of actors don't make it look fun. Like this business can like look stressful, or or it can take a piece of them, and and the all of the stuff just can, you just have always. I I feel like ever since almost famous, you're obviously magnetic as a performer, but the way you've navigated this town in general, everyone feels the same way about you. They just like love you and. Obviously, I've gotten to go to your your a, a few of your parties um, that are a blast. But that's what I was like when you moved to. I remember going to it for the first time. I think it was a Halloween party, uh -huh. and I was like, "Well, this is what Hollywood should be. This is fun. <laughs> like, it's, it's all fun. the coolest people, and, and 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 nobody was like. Sometimes these like kind of corporate." Things everybody's looking at each other and sizing each other up. You keep and the corporates out of it's, it. Yeah, the this isn't the creatives. You're, you're, Get the creatives you have like in the room. table we know dancers. <laughs> you have <laughs> you, right. people that are jumping in the pool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I you know, I think you get into the like, look, you know, my favorite. Well, there's a couple of things you said there that I want to comment on. Like, my favorite kind of actors are the ones who make things look effortless. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't ever want to see someone act. No. Right. I want to see. I want to like disappear into them or I want to like be taken by them, you know? And I, I think, think that when you see the acting, it's like, oh, they're, they're, they're acting, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's why Jeff Bridges has always been one of my favorite. God, he's so good, yeah. You know, you never see the work, even though you know as an actor that it's there. Yeah. It's like, and that to me, that's what I aspire to as an actor. You know, I don't want anyone ever to see the work happening. Do you remember, do you, just reminds me of this Tropic Thunder quote. Do you remember when like McConaughey is like he's like the agent to uh, Ben Stiller's character? Yeah. And he's like he's, he's like he's just he cried so you know he's like just like crying. He's always crying. He goes, <laughs> man, if he cries, you cry harder, man. He's like and I just actually remember this is like such a competitive thing oh. where you like you want it people to take you seriously and you want to like yeah. work so hard to show everyone how <laughs> how much you've done. Mm -hmm. But that you're exactly right. The best actors the best actors can boil it down to its simplest elements and, and really just make it look so easy. 
when I see that happening, no matter how they get there. Yeah. Right? Like Daniel Day-Lewis is fucking effortless. I mean, he goes there, but it's just effortless. You don't see him act. No. So Almost Famous is one of my favorite movies. It um, is. Yes. And it's so fun to watch someone come on the scene and just knock it out of the park. Like, that's not an easy role. And obviously the world fell in love with you, and you just went on this ride of the Golden Globes and the Oscars and all this whole thing, and you were like... 12. Yeah. Like so, I was so young. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was that like? It, well, it was amazing. It was like a dream, but it literally felt like, it felt like a dream. Like, I remember the day after the Oscars, it was literally like I woke up, like, did that all just happen? Because, you know, the whole awards kind of thing is, is this long, months-long process, and you're, you're going here and there, and you're in the, this country and that country, and then you don't even know what's happening, and you're in a room talking to someone, and this is me at 21 going like, oh, this is just what people do, you know, and then, when I woke up the day after I lost, it was like, oh, I have nowhere to go. <laughs> I was I like, oh, wow, that just happened. Yeah. Um, for me, it was like the most wonderful coming out party in our town that you could ever have possibly asked for. And I, you, you know, coming from the family that I come from and really, like, honestly, the ba the best part of that was that I wanted to act, like I never thought I'd do anything else. And I think my parents' concern was that I didn't understand what kind of came with that, like the ups and the downs and yeah. the peaks yeah. and the valleys of what this business really is. And how much do you really love it? And like that was the big thing for them. They just wanted to make sure that I really loved what I was doing because it's a brutal business. And I think that that kind of moment for them was like, oh, she's gonna be okay because I felt really removed from the whole, like I was, I felt grounded. I didn't feel like I was in, the the, it, the process was a whirlwind, but I was like in love with my ex-husband and I wanted to like nest. And so there was this interesting thing happening and I think my parents immediately were like, okay, like she's gonna be, she's gonna do it. And yeah. that to me was actually like, I felt like that was the day after I got a four-page letter from Kurt, and you know Kurt. I love him. And he is not exactly like the dad that emotes, you know, he's tough. Yeah. And he tells you the truth. And he had very high expectations of me as a young girl because I was like a go-getter, you know. But he wrote me this four-page letter, which I'll keep to myself, but it really was like that was my coming of age. Yeah. And it, it happened in that, in that moment. Um, it's like everything came together. I also was so lucky to be a part of that group of people. Again, like it was the, still like love those people. Billy Crudup is still like a great life friend. Cameron Crowe, there's no one better to work for and with. He was just the best. And um, yeah, I just feel like super Lucky, and then looking back, I, I, now I look back, I'm like, wow, I was a baby. I was a baby. But you've, you're also, your parents, like knowing your parents, you, they, the one thing I've like realized getting to know your family is everybody's got the most grounded perspective. There's not one ego in that bunch. Everybody's having... Well, every, <laughs> Oliver. Oliver, God. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> do, do you know one of my favorite, one of my favorite Oliver moments on Scream Queens? was they busted out a shirtless scene for Oliver like last minute and he was like, I am not in shape. And instead of like trying to get in shape, he ate more. He doubled down on it. That's and probably. I was like, that just sums up Oliver. <laughs> it also, you're, yeah, I, pre I really appreciate you saying that. We are a really grounded family. Like it's the greatest and you're so inviting and there's just, but I, I can imagine that, that, that um, uh, equation usually doesn't produce well-rounded people who are able to take on this business and with things like that, conceptualize them in a way that, that is healthy, you know? Yeah. And, and your family really is like, I don't know, it's just a magical, I, I feel very grateful for my family. We have very different families, but we also have it's very, very similar, similar. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Kurt said something to me too at the end, which kind of like, you know, 
our par- my parents, like, we laugh through it all. Like, we find the laughter in moments that for some people might feel like soul crushing or yeah. painful or hard. And I think that carries, that will carry me. F- that's all I want. I want that for my kids. I want that from with my friends. Like, I want to be able to have real perspective on all of it. <laughs> Glenn, I love you. I love you. Goodbye. This has been so fun. I'm so happy they paired us because we have such good history. And so I feel like this came very easy to both this of us. This was to so fun. Chat. And I just like root for you. I'm so proud of you. Me and, too. Uh, you. Go see Glass Onion. It's the best ride of the year. And go see Devotion. It's a beautiful movie. Thank you.